So glad you've joined us. This is our first Live to Win series webcast. I'm going to be talking about zombies, the number one challenge facing businesses today. You know, we're so glad you're here. We have people from all over the world whenever we do a Ziggler webcast. We have over 40 countries attend. We're just grateful that you're here. We want you to know that we care about you. We're trying to find innovative information and ideas and content that can make a difference in your personal life, your family life, and your business life. So today we're going to be talking about something that, you know, it's kind of humorous. The, the subject of zombies can be either, you know, really, you know, kind of dark and gory, or it can be kind of funny, or it can be kind of serious. And, and today I just want to share with you this, this idea. And, and everywhere I go and speak and travel, whether it's in the UK or Australia, all over the United States, wherever I go, this challenge is not just a problem in American business, but it's literally everywhere. But first, as we get started, I want to share a little bit about some of you. This is first time you've been here, and so I want to thank you for coming. On this webcast, if you look at your screen in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a question box. So if you have questions that you want me to answer at the end, I'll do my best to get to as many of them as I can in our 45-minute time frame. So if you want to send a question in there, just do it in the top right-hand corner of the box. And then at the bottom, you'll see a chat room. Now, the chat room is optional. We have a great community of people who really love, you know, chiming in with ideas and concepts and making points. And as long as you keep your comments focused on benefiting the group, focused on the subject at hand, positive and uplifting, we want you to join as well. If you don't want to join chat, that's okay. So that's just kind of the lay of the land. I want to get started now. So right there on the first picture there, that's a picture of Dad. And as many of you know, Dad went home to be with the Lord about two years ago, two years ago, November. 28th, and he had an amazing career. The Ziegler Corporation is obviously named after him. If you came to us from our Facebook page, you'll notice that he recently, the, you know, the Facebook fan page went over 2 million likes, 2 million likes. We estimate that Dad impacted over 250 million people in his career. 250 million people. How did he do this? Well, countless speeches, over 30, in fact, 33 books now, 33 books, tens of millions of CDs have come out, tapes and downloads. We have a podcast, the Ziggler Inspire podcast, that's on iTunes. It's absolutely free, by the way. Over 25 million downloads on that one podcast series alone. So Dad's had an incredible impact in the areas of personal motivation, sales, business, leadership, goal setting, attitude, all the things that make the difference in what we're talking about today. I just wanted to give you that because while he's had an impact and his career has had an impact, his legacy is living on. And one of the things about his legacy is we make a concerted effort to bring to you the wisdom that he brought forward and we try to apply it to today. So today when I go out and I travel, I see this everywhere I go, there's this real problem in America. This problem is, is reaching, you know, not only is it in America, but it's global, it's, it's worldwide. It's on TV shows, it's on it's late night TV, news specials. They've even made movies about this problem, whole series on it, books and everything else. So what is this problem that we're talking about? Well, you already know, it's zombies. That's right, everywhere you go, it seems like they're zombies. And when I'm with a live audience, I'll ask a question, I'll say, so what is a zombie? So I want to ask you, wherever you're sitting, if you're at business right now, if you're at work, if you're at home, wherever you are, what is a zombie? Is it the walking dead? That's the answer that we get on a regular basis, the walking dead. You know who they are. You, you go into the office and you see them there and, and they're just there's somebody in there and they're just kind of passing their time, right? They're not really focused, they're not really engaged, they don't really care. In fact, if, if work starts at 8.30, they're usually the one who rolls in about 8.32. And if work ends at, at 5, they're usually packed up and ready to go at 4.45. And my goodness, 4.59, 5 o'clock on the dot, they're heading out. If you walk by their desk or their cube or wherever they are, they might be texting or on Facebook. They're doing everything they can to not be noticed and to not do any extra. You've seen them in meetings. They sit in the meeting and they say, don't pick me, don't pick me. The boss or the leader asks a question, they look away, they don't volunteer anything. That's really what we're talking about 
what a walking dead is. Somebody who doesn't understand that the position they're in today is really a springboard to their future, not a sentence to be served. So I ask you, are you working with zombies? Have you ever been a zombie yourself? I know in my own career there have been times, luckily for me, short periods of times because I've got teammates who will call me on it where I've kind of had a zombie attitude, right? I'm just going to go in and get by and go home. It's only four more days to the weekend. You ever had that attitude before? You know, unfortunately, some people, they adopt that attitude for years at a time. So why is it? Why don't zombies care? I'll tell you why. It's right here. Zombies don't care because they have no dreams. Zombies don't care because they have no dreams. See, that's just the bottom line. I'm stuck in this job. It's the best I can do. It's not the one I wanted. I mean, I went to school to get an education. I was going to be in management. I was going to be a leader. I was going to be a business owner. I was going to be a professional athlete. I was going to be a chef. I was going to do all this stuff, and then things happened, and it just didn't work out. And I had to get this entry-level job, or I had to take this job doing this. And you know what? I'm just going to do it because I need the money, but not because I want to, but only because I have to. So I'm going to give the minimal effort. And then one day that dream kind of disappears and they enter full zombiehood. So what do we do? How do we get that dream? You know, I say this, that your dreams are the edges of the puzzles of your life. Your dreams are the edges of the puzzle of your life. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you've ever done a tabletop puzzle, you know how you start, right? You, you, you pour it out on the desk or the table and you look at it and there's all these pieces, a couple hundred pieces. The first thing you do is you look for the edge pieces because you know if you fill in the edges, the rest of the puzzle goes faster. If we start from the edge and work our way in, then we have a better chance of completing that puzzle fast and with a lot more fun. Our dreams are the same way. You see, we wander aimlessly through life like a zombie if we don't have a dream. But as soon as we have a dream that kind of frames our life, then we can walk with purpose towards that dream. So how do we, how do we deal with this? Well, let's, let's look at the zombie cure. Now technically, see I'm kind of a nerd, and some of you already know that, but I'm kind of a nerd. Technically, the big syllable word for zombie is called disengaged. So that means if we want to cure zombies, we got to get them engaged. A lot of this research came from the Gallup poll. You can Google it, you can look up the word engagement. And the big question today is if I'm a business owner, if I'm a leader, if I'm a manager, or even if I'm an individual, how do I get myself engaged? How do I get myself fired up about being a part of the team, about being excited about what I do? Well, engagement is that cure. So how do we get people engaged? Well, what, are the, what does it look like in the workforce today? So I want to show you this picture. I love this picture. It's a bike, and it's a 10-seater bike. So I want you to remember this picture because this is a picture of the business climate today. You see, in the business climate today, 52% of the workforce is disengaged. 52% of the workforce is disengaged. So what that means is, over, what that means is, is that five out of 10 of the people are coasting. They're barely going through the motions. They're just on the bike sitting there. Their feet are on the pedals, but they're not pushing. And then if you look at the back of the bike, 18% are what's called actively disengaged. What does that mean? These are the people at the back of the bike. They're dragging their feet. They're deploying parachutes. They're hitting the brakes. So that means that literally 7 out of 10 people on a team are either engaged, disengaged or actively disengaged. That front seat of the bike there, that's three people pedaling like crazy. Three people pedaling like crazy. They're the ones who are driving the business. So what does your business look like? Do you have more than three out of 10 pedaling like crazy? Three out of 10 who are engaged in your organization? Or do you have seven out of 10 either coasting or either being actively disengaged? And once again, what is an actively disengaged person? That's somebody who says something like this. Hey, you know, the boss said that, but it's not going to work. You see, actively disengaged, what they do is they undermine authority and leadership. They do these different things to make it not work. 
So if we look at engagement and we want to move that way, we've got to make an economic, see if I'm a business owner and I'm speaking to managers and executives and business owners here, if, if I'm going to make changes in my organization to get the engagement up, I've got to believe the energy and time and money that I put into those changes is worthwhile. So what does engagement cost me? Well, here's what we do know. Show me the money. And I, I'm thinking we're having a, a little bit of technical difficulty on this, so I want you to know that our, our team's working on it. And it's so bad that our computer is translating it and making it twice as bad as it actually is. When we get that double image right there on the monitor, that means that whatever the problem is, it's actually twice as worse as you think it is. Now, whoever thought Ziegler would do that? So what is it, show me the money? Well, 22% of the organizations that are out there Boy, when they are, the, the, the engaged organizations do 22% better than the disengaged on productivity. I mean, it's an incredible thing. It reminds me of a story that, that dad used to tell about, you know, this guy that, and I want to give you an example, a positive example of what it means to be engaged. Dad was growing up in the grocery store and there was a gentleman there, uh, Mr. Anderson. Dad worked for Mr. Anderson. And dad was about 12 or 13 years old at the time. This is Yazoo City, Mississippi. Yazoo City, Mississippi. So what does is, what is Yazoo City, Mississippi have to do with this? Well, this was during the Great Depression. So times were tough. And the economy was depressed. And everybody was just kind of getting by. They were helping each other, but they were just getting by trying to help each other out. And Dad was in that grocery store and one day this guy named Tom Scott comes running into the grocery store and he yells out, Mr. Anderson, can I borrow two cans of beans? You see back then inventory was so short that the local grocery stores, they would borrow inventory for each other because they didn't have enough money to keep inventory on hand. And so Mr. Anderson would yell out at Tom Scott and say, yeah, absolutely, Tom, you can grab a couple of whatever you need. You know where to write it down. So Tom Scott would run in there or I believe his name was Charlie Scott. Charlie Scott would run in there as fast as he could. He'd grab those beans and he'd run out. And Dad would say, Mr. Anderson, why does Charlie Scott, why does Charlie always run in here when he wants to get inventory, when he wants to get beans or whatever? And Mr. Anderson said, easy, Zig. It's like this. He's working for a raise. And he's going to get it too. And Dad said to him, what do you mean he's going to get that raise? How do you know that he's going to get that raise? And Mr. Anderson said, well, if his boss doesn't give him a raise, I will. You see, that's engaged. That's somebody who takes whatever position they're in, they go the extra mile. Well, engaged companies, they have 22% higher productivity. They have two times the success rate, and they have 41% fewer quality incidents. Think about that. An engaged company, people who are striving to help each other out, people who are trying to go to the next level, people when they see a problem, they offer a solution, people who are always helping others do more and have more and be more. Those kind of companies, that team camaraderie, they have 41% fewer quality incidents. I mean, think about a hospital, they drop 41% fewer babies. I mean, being engaged is absolutely critical. So what else do we know? Well, here's the difference between engaged and disengaged companies. There's a 25% lower turnover rate in high turnover companies, and a 65% lower turnover rate in lower turnover companies. So that means in fast food, when you've got an engaged organization, an organization that's there to serve the customer and each other, an organization that's excited about working on the team, their turnover rate is substantially less. Well, what does that mean in dollars for you? Here's what it means. When you have to replace somebody because of, of high turnover issues, because of, in, of disengagement, it costs one and a half times the salary to replace somebody. Now that's an industry average. So if you're in the engineering world or professional world or something like that, it may cost more than that. If you're in a, a different type of industry, it may cost less than that, but that's an industry. So what does all that mean? You know, golly, all that higher turnover because of disengagement, why is that? Well, the, the, the one and a half times the salary, but that's an amazing factor. So why do people leave? Well, they did a survey on this. And this is awesome, we got our thing up and running, it looks good now. 
thanks Bert for making that happen. 79% of the people who leave an organization voluntarily say the number one reason they leave is lack of appreciation. Think about that. You've got a team of people, you're the owner, you're the leader, and you look out and you've got engaged people and disengaged people. And the number one reason that the people who you don't want to leave, right, the ones who leave voluntarily, the number one reason they leave is because of lack of appreciation. That tells us that they're leaving because their management, their boss, their leadership is disengaged. You see, because one of the traits of an engaged leader, an engaged owner, is they're always finding what's right, what's good, what's working with their team, and they're letting them know. They're observing winning behavior, and they're reinforcing that with positive input and compliments. Here's a crazy stat. I love this stat. This came out of Parade Magazine. 35% say you're fired. What do we mean here? Well, they went out and they did this study, this survey, and they said to the audience, if you had your choice where you work today, would you rather get a substantial raise or would you rather get your direct manager or supervisor fired? If you had your choice, which one do you want? 35% said they would rather get their manager or their supervisor fired than get a substantial raise. Let's talk real money. We're talking about people, let's say they're making $15 an hour. And the offer is, hey, you can make 20 bucks an hour or you can get your manager fired. Which one do you want? Over a third of them say, you're fired. Why is that? Well, let me tell you this. I've traveled everywhere. I've been all over. I've been in front of literally thousands of owners and managers all across the globe. And I've met with all kinds of people from all walks of life. People who have a lot of education, who don't have much education, who have a lot of money, who don't have much money. But this I do know about people. In general, on average, people are smart. Intuitively, they know this. They know that if you are a roadblock to their success, or they know that you're going to help them to achieve a greater success. Can you believe that? 35% of the workforce today actually feels like their manager, their leader, their supervisor, their boss is a roadblock to their success. That's why they say you're fired. You see, it's not about being a tough or demanding boss. Because when I played sports and even when I was in work, I've had tough and demanding bosses. But these bosses and my coaches, they were fair. They were tough because they expected more out of me than I expected out of myself. You see, I respect that. It may be difficult when I don't meet the standard. It may be uncomfortable when they think I could do better than I am doing. But at the end of the day, I know they want me to succeed. That's not who we're talking about. We're talking about leadership and the bosses and the supervisors who don't even care, who don't even take a specific interest in them. In fact, these people are holding them down rather than lifting them up. So what is the answer? How do we get engagement? It's very simple. A leader that cares. Oh, that's simple. Well, what, how do you get a leader that cares? Well, Dad had this quote. This is, this is an old quote. and. You know, the first part of this quote is not his, it's not unique to, to Zig Ziglar, but the last two words are, he said this, people don't care how much you know until they know how much they, you care about them. So let's break that down. You see, I'm a husband, I'm a business owner, I'm a boss. You know what I found out? You know, my, my wife expects certain things of me. You know, she expects me to work and to provide and to pull my fair share. But I don't get, you know, a round of applause for doing all that because that's what's expected. You see, when I go home, if I want to show her I care about her, I say, how was your day? I know you had a conversation with a friend. How did that go? You've got the situation in your family. How did that play out? You know, what do you want to do tomorrow? Where do you want to go on vacation? What are your dreams? When I start showing her that I care about her, everything changes. The same in the workplace. You see, our, our team members, we all expect the lights to be on, to get paid on time, you know, to have benefits and, and things like that. That's what, that's what people expect. But in, and as bosses and owners, sometimes we get caught up. Hey, we're doing all we should. But you know what our people want? They want us to know that we care about them personally. They want us to say, hey, tell me about your kids. Where are you going on vacation this year? You know, your oldest just went off to college. How's college going? And then there's the big one. 
you know, Philip or Michael or Margaret, what's your dream? Who do you want to be, do, or have? What do you want to, you know, where do you want to go? Do you want to retire in five years, 20 years? Do you want to leave a college fund for your great grandkids? You see, when we start talking to our people about their dreams and everything they want to be, do, and have, then we show them that we care about them specifically. So how do we become a leader that cares? So if you're taking notes, this is where the rubber heats the road. First off is you've got to build a solid foundation. If you're a manager, a leader, or let's just say you're a team member and you're thinking, wow, I'm working with zombies, how can I not be a zombie? Well, you have as much responsibility as your boss does, even more, because nobody has more responsibility for our own individual success than we do. Nobody's going to look at it after it like ourselves, so what do we do? Well, we've got to get the foundation right. That means that we need to be the right person for the right position. We've got to have the right skills, the right personality traits, the right character qualities, and everything else. Once we start off with that, then we've got a fast start. Once we've got that in place, then we've got to build the relationship. See, if I bring the right person into the organization, they have the right qualities, I do the right training with them, I give them clarity what the job role is, that they have the resources to make sure that it happens, that's awesome. But now we have this ongoing relationship, and it's a two-way communication. The last one is I need to facilitate their dreams. I need to have, as a leader, a specific process that I can help them achieve their dreams. And here's what's cool is this process works in achieving the dreams of your organization. It's the same process of how to set goals in your organization, whether they're profit goals or revenue goals or whatever the goals are in your organization. I need to do this. I need to get our folks focused on the fact that they're working for a dream and not a paycheck. Leaders who care help their team members achieve their goals and dreams. Being successful on the job should mean that the team member is one step closer to his or her personal goals and dreams. I love that phrase. See, the better I do in my job, the quicker I should get to my goal or dream. When someone comes to work every day to achieve their dreams, amazing things happen. If I'm coming into work to pass the time to make a paycheck, you know, I may be providing what the boss wants but I'm not going to really put myself in a position to grow. But if I clearly know what my dream is, and my boss knows what my dream is, my leader, my manager, and I come in to the work focused on getting my dream, then the work I do that day is going to take care of itself. A solid foundation has these three ingredients. We've already talked about this. The right person, clarity for the position, and the resources to do the job. You know, I say this, this is kind of a bonus segment here. When you have somebody in your organization, there's only three reasons why they won't do the job, right? Only three reasons why somebody won't do the job. Number one, they didn't know it was their job and they didn't have the training to do it. Number two, they didn't have the resources to do it. And number three, attitude. Here's what I mean by those three reasons. If it's somebody's task to do a job and they don't do it, don't do it ask them, hey, did you know it's your job? If they say yes, then say, do you know how to do the job? Did you have the training to do the job? If they say yes to that, then did you have the resources to do that job? If they say yes to that, and they still didn't do it, that only leaves one option, attitude. Now, people who work for a dream have amazing attitudes. That's the power of this concept. A great relationship has these ingredients. This is the second piece that we went over briefly. You see, if I'm going to build a relationship, it's got to be built on integrity. And when you build something on integrity, the byproduct of that is trust. So when we build a relationship based on trust, that simply means this. When the boss says they're going to do something, they do it. And when they ask the team member to do something, they check back and see that it's done, and they recognize them for doing a good job. They give them that feedback loop, that appreciation. It's based on two-way communication. I already said that I was kind of a nerd. I can sit in my office for for all day long and never talk to anybody, but I'll have these imaginary conversations in my head. You ever known somebody like that? I mean, I can meet with my whole team in my head. I think I've had a great day. They have no clue of what's going on. If this is you, I want you to focus on this. Does your team, do your people, do your teammates understand with clarity what you're trying to accomplish because you've communicated to them what you expect from them as far as their responsibility to that and then have you given them a chance to communicate back to you? 
You see, when you build a two-way uh, communication, everything changes. And then when somebody does good, are you generous with the praise and recognition? Because once again, 79% of the people who leave, the number one reason is lack of appreciation. So if we're building a relationship this way, man, powerful things will happen. So here are two stories that I want to tell. First, we'll talk about Lou Holtz. Now, Lou Holtz was an incredible football coach. He coached at Notre Dame and several other universities. The last university, the last time he won the national championship, he was being interviewed right after the game. And this reporter came in. And the reporter said this. They said, Coach Holtz, you just won the national championship. But it's already been announced that you've lost your offensive coordinator and your defensive coordinator for next year. Isn't it going to be more difficult to win the national championship next year? Isn't it going to be tougher for you? And Coach Holtz just looked at him and said, absolutely not. It's going to be even better than this year. And the reporter was stunned. He said, what do you mean? And Coach Holtz said this. He said, it's the biggest blessing that we could have. The reporter was still stunned because, you see, in the business world, the analogy is this. You just had your record year for profits, and then your sales VP and your marketing VP and your operations VP all get hired away by the competition. And you meet with the board, and you tell them it's going to be your best year ever. It doesn't make sense. But listen to what Coach Holt said. He said, it's going to be our best year. Here's why. You see, I'm known as the head coach that makes head coaches. So I have an office full. My desk is filled with resumes from the most outstanding assistant coaches and head coaches of smaller colleges and universities in the country. I get my pick of the litter. I get to go through the cream of the crop. I get all the best candidates. And when I hire a new head coach, somebody to come in and run the offense, I make a simple deal with them. I say, you help me win the national championship and I'll get you the head coaching job of your dreams. You see, they had clear communication. They had high standards and expectations. But Coach Holtz knew that they were being motivated because someday they wanted to be head coach. And so his job as the head coach was to teach these incoming assistant coaches how to become head coaches, how to lead, how to manage an offense and a defense, how to work with team members and coaching staff of all different types of personalities. Because when that reputation got built, then he had the pick of the litter. But it gets even better. Coach Holt said this. He said, it's real simple. When I bring on an assistant coach who's come in from outside our organization, he said, the way our systems work is they were in another school and they were recruiting locally and regionally. So he knows all the local talent, all the top football players in that area. And when they come on to our team, guess what happens? He'll call his athletes that he's recruited and he'll say, hey, I'm going to to coach for Coach Holtz, you want to come with me. Now, how cool is that? Not only do I get the pick of the litter of the top assistant coaches in the country, but they bring their star athletes with them. Yep, Coach Holtz had it figured out. And then if you'll look at the rifle picture real quick, that rifle diagram, you'll notice on there there's a front sight and a back sight. Now in Texas, we're into hunting and we understand rifles, and this is an old-fashioned rifle, those are iron sights. But here's the picture I want to have for you. There's a target out there, and that target is called satisfying the customer's needs. That's what we want to hit. Whatever product or service that we are delivering to the marketplace, as long as we can meet the needs of our customers, that's the bullseye of the target. Now, as a company, we have our own internal goals. We call them profit goals, revenue goals, you know, costs, we want to lower our costs, whatever our goals are, that's the front sight. The back sight, that's the individual's dreams. You see, if my dream is to go to Tahiti or to pay off my house or to provide a college education for my grandkids, if that's my dream, if that's my back sight, as soon as my manager, my leader, or even myself, as soon as I can align those two together, where I look through the back sight, through the front sight, and serve the customer, then we've got a home run. When I understand the better I do in my job, the faster I get my dream, the faster the company wins, the better off we all are. All dreams require time and money. Think about it. Every dream that I've ever talked to people about requires time and money. All kinds of time and money. You know, if you're going to get out of debt, you got to have a plan. you got to make more money. you got to spend less than you're making so you can put some money aside. So let's just 
say you're in the team position right now and you, you feel kind of, you, you don't have much control over your situation. Did you know that most of the top leaders in business, wherever you go, they started off in a similar position like you? Kind of at the bottom, kind of one of many, but they stood out for some reason. And the reason they stood out when you ask them is they had that unbelievable attitude, that work ethic and that skill all combined so that wherever they were, they got noticed. So whatever job role that you're in, I want you to get a clear picture of what your dream is and realize that the better you do in your job, just like Charlie Scott, the better you do in your job that day, the more likely and the faster it is that you're gonna achieve your dream. You see, because if you're on a team of 10 and you're number one, you're gonna have the opportunity to get a promotion, to get more commission, to get a higher paycheck. And guess what? There are even some quote unquote dead end jobs out there but if you are number one, even in that kind of place, the competition comes in and recognizes you. Or you gain the confidence to go out and look for what else is available. That's why it's always in your best interest and in the company's best interest for you to give it 100% exactly where you are right now. Dream alignment requires this. So what's the dream alignment? It's the dream alignment of what the company's goals are and what the individual's dreams are. It requires the right person, the right relationships, and the right process. If the team member and the leader both have integrity, if the relationship is built on two-way communication and trust and you know, recognition and the right process of a specific steps, a goal-setting system to get there, then amazing things can happen. So I want to close up with this story. And then I want to tell you something special, and then we're going to get into the Q&A. So if you think of this zombie thing, I want you just to think of this story because this story in a nutshell sums up the whole problem to the zombie issue. It is the zombie cure. We had this relationship with the hospital and in this hospital they were teaching one of our programs and at that hospital we actually had an individual there named Dr. Bob who was leading the class. And after he'd been teaching the class about six weeks, Dr. Bob gets on the elevator. And on the elevator is Johnny, and Johnny was the janitor. And Dr. Bob gets on there and he looks at, at Johnny and Johnny's just whistling and smiling. I mean, he's a happy man. And Dr. Bob says, Johnny, why are you smiling so much? Why are you whistling? And Johnny said, Dr. Bob, I'm buying a house this week and it's all your fault. And Dr. Bob, you know, he was, he was, he was kind of shocked. He didn't know about a house. He said, Johnny, I don't know anything about a house. What do you mean? And Johnny said this, he said, he said, Dr. Bob, remember about four weeks ago, I'm in the class and, and you're teaching this goal setting? You know that seven step process? And he said, I had this dream and my dream was always to own a house someday. And you know what, I've never owned a house. I've rented my whole life. Everybody in my family's always rented. I don't know anybody really in my family who owns a house. He said, so I took my dream and I put it right there on the top to own the house. And I went through the seven steps and step number five was, you know, who do I need to know? What people do I need to engage with who could help me get this goal, which happened to be a house. So I'm sitting right next to Henry. And I say, Henry, you have your own home, don't you? And Henry said, yeah, I do. And he said, Henry, I, I need to get a loan. Do you know who I can get a loan from? And Henry had gotten his loan from the bank and he gave me the bank officer's name. So I called the bank. So I go down to the bank a couple of weeks ago and I, I tell the banker, I say, I want a home. And the banker says, well, let me ask you this. You know are you employed? And he said, yes sir, I am. Here's what you asked for. 20 years of pay stubs right here. I've been working at the same company 20 years. He says, well Johnny, do you have any debt? I mean, are you in a good position? He said, oh yeah, I've got cash in the bank. He said, well do you have enough money for a down payment? And he said, yes sir, I do. I've got plenty. So the banker looked at Johnny and said, guess what? You can have a home. And Johnny looked at Dr. Bob and he said, Dr. Bob, because of you, I'm moving into a house this week, a home. It's closer to the hospital. I'm paying less money for more space in a nicer neighborhood than I was paying in rent before. Dr. Bob, I'm buying a house and it's all your fault. Isn't that powerful? That's a dream alignment. You see, that's an unintended consequence. That organization never intended to teach Johnny goal setting so he should go and get a home. But think about this. How loyal do you think Johnny was to that organization? after they had helped his dream come true. You see, the zombie cure is engagement. Engagement starts with a leader who cares. 
A leader cares by building the right relationship built on integrity and two-way communication and then gives their people a specific step-by-step -step process on how to achieve their dreams. Because if you have a team of people who are coming to work every single day to achieve a dream instead of a paycheck, amazing things happen. Now at the end, in a few minutes, we're going to do the Q&A, but I wanted to share with you something. I wanted to share with you a special offer that we have coming up. This is for all of our business owners that are listening today. So if you have a small business, mid-sized business, and you're wanting to take your business to the next level, if you want to get rid of the zombies in your organization, if you want to systemize your business, if you want to take your business and marketing and sales and operations and administration and leadership and make it turnkey, then I want you to seriously check this out. You see, when we started our own business, I mean, I want you to think of the day when you went into business for yourself, when you became the owner, when you became the boss, when you became the cure to zombies, right? Because you probably started your own business because you were tired of working with the zombies. Let's face it. So you start your own business. Did all of a sudden you have more free time? Did you start enjoying the lifestyle you always wanted? Or maybe it was more like all your free time evaporated and you spent most of your time fighting fire, fire, you know, uh, brush fires. Well, if that's your case, if you're ready to systemize your business and take it to the next level, learning how to systemize marketing and sales and operations and administration and leadership to get your life back, to develop a team of people who are out there achieving and working towards their own dreams, then I want you to join us. It's going to be September 25th and 26th right here at Ziegler headquarters. <laughs> we have a small room. We can, we can barely fit about 30 people out there, maybe 35 if we squeeze you in. What does this mean to you? It means that over those two days, whatever specific business questions that you have, we'll be able to address individually as we go through this system. I'll be teaching the class along with Howard Partridge, who is our exclusive small business coach. Howard has over 17 years working with business owners in all different industries on how to take their business and make it turnkey. The investment for this is simple. It's $997 per person. But since you're here today, since we always like to treat those who join us and give us their valuable time on our webcast, we have a special offer for you. You can act right now and save $500. That's only $497 a person. That's two days right here at Ziegler headquarters. In addition to that, you can bring your business partner or your spouse for only $100 more. So why do we do that? Well, we understand this. Small business owners, medium-sized business owners, have you noticed that if things are going well at, at, at home, tend, things tend to go well at the business? But have you noticed the opposite? If things aren't going well at home, things usually don't go well at business, and the same happens in reverse. If things aren't doing so well at business, things aren't doing so well at home. It takes more than one person a lot of times to figure out what's going on in the business. So we want you and your business partner or your spouse to come so we can get you on the same page, so we can equip you with the materials that you need to know to take that business to the next level. So go ahead, register today. We're going to be sending out an email right after this with all the information on it so that you can just click back and register. If you want in now before it fills up, since we only have such a limited space, you can call in 800-527-0306. You can call in right now. And we also have a special business assessment. And you can email that in, and Bert, if you'll show that email address, it's right there at the bottom of the screen. If you can email that in to Philip Hatfield. And Philip, why don't you come on up here? We'll just do an impromptu guest appearance, show you that we're real here at Ziegler. This is Philip. Philip's a, uh, he's got an, an incredible wealth of small business experience and background, and you were a, kind of a turnaround guy for an organization that had 1,200 stores, if I remember right, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and Philip has just a passion for helping business owners understand the specific needs that they have. This business assessment has 50 questions on it, and in these 50 questions, we will go through specifically what you need to do and take the next step to improve your marketing, your sales, your leadership, and your operations. So just email Philip, which is phatfield at ziggler.com, and he will send you that assessment right away. Thanks for right. sharing up. Philip didn't know I was going to do that. His eyes got really big when I pointed him out. But you know, if you're in the studio with me, you're going to get some special attention. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go and let's start answering some questions. 
Let's see here, we've got, uh, and if you want to send in questions, you can still do that because I'm getting them through Skype in here. Let's see, how do you present yourself from catching the zombie status? This is from Gatsby in California. So how do you keep yourself from having, you know, turning into that zombie? Well, it's real simple. We talked about it earlier. Man, you need that dream. What is that compelling thing that drives you all day long? You know, is it, is it that dream house? Is it getting out of debt? Is, that, is it that beautiful bride and those children that you go home to? You know, if, if it is, why don't you have the picture of your family, of those you love, of those who inspire you, and put them right next to your phone, right next to your computer, in your wallet, so that you see them constantly. They're the reminder of the inspiration. What is that dream that compels you? And then ask yourself this. Okay, I've got the dream. What's the one thing I can do today that's going to get me closer to my dream? And as long as you're answering that single question every single day, then you're not going to turn into that zombie, you see, because when you understand that the energy, the effort, the impact that I had today leads to the fulfilling of my goals and my dreams tomorrow, then it all makes sense. Let's see, uh, Elizabeth in Kentucky, I mentor independent business owners. How do I revive them when technically I'm not their boss? You know what, working with business owners, we've learned because we host hundreds of them in our conferences, it's like herding cats, right? Because every business owner is the boss. They get to make their own decisions on their own time frame, doing what they want to do when they want to do it. You got to sell them the dream, but it's not your dream, it's their dream. You see how the zombie cure keeps coming back to the dream? What's the business owner's dream? Now they had a dream when they started, usually. Boy, I want to be my own boss, I want to have my own lifestyle, I want to have lots of free time. Some even dream big, you know what, I want a turnkey business. That's why we created our boot camp, the Ziegler Business Owner Boot Camp, to help people create their turnkey business. So when I work with a business owner, I say, what's your one thing that you can do today to help you achieve your dream? Just like the individual who doesn't want to become a zombie. Same question. And you know what surprises me? Well, I, I don't know. Usually the, the, the dream is, is I want to make more money. You ever heard that? Well, what's your dream? I want to make more money. That's a good dream, but that's not really a dream. That's a thing that solves the problem I have right now. So then we ask the next question. Well, why do you want to make more money? Well, I want to make more money so I can pay off the debt. Well, why do you want to pay off the debt? Well, that way my business will have value and maybe I could sell it someday. Well, why would you want to sell it someday? Well, so I could retire in financial freedom and have the life I always wanted. Well, what is the life you always wanted? You see, now we're getting to the dream part. Oh, you know, well, there's a lake house that I've always wanted, and it's, you know, it's in the Piney Woods, it's out in East Texas, and, you know, the air is so clean, and the, the fishing's good, and, you know, I just love spending time out there with my family, and I, I look forward to the day when my grandkids come out there, and I can have them one-on-one, -on -one, just me and them. See, now we're talking about a dream. When you can start smelling the air, when you can start feeling the texture of that water in, in May, when it's just turning warm and the bass are just really starting to bite, you know, maybe a little earlier because the bass bite earlier around here than that. But you see what I'm saying is you got to get that business owner's dream real in their mind because until it's real, until the benefits of taking action in that dream outweigh the pain of making new decisions, they just stay where they are. Next question. Uh, how do you deal with those who are younger who are zombies? Oh man, we get this all the time. This is really a challenging uh, question for those who hire younger individuals. As you know, in the, in the United States, and I'm not sure how it is around the world, but so many kids are coming up and they've got all this talent, they've got all this potential, and they've got all this education. And they've got a high level of what we call entitlement and a, and a low level of what we call you know, energy and effort to earn what they get. And they go to school for a specific skill or trade and they go out and they get a job and it's not the one they wanted, it's the end of the world and the whole thing crashes in because why bother, it's not what I wanted to do anyway, well I'll show up because I have to because I gotta make the car payment. Number one thing, wherever you are right now is the springboard to wherever you're gonna go. If you don't put any spring in the springboard, then you're gonna stay right where you are. 
So I'd sit down with the young people and say, you know what, we hired you for a reason. We see potential. Your personality, your skill set, your education, you can be dynamite at this position. Now this position may not be what you wanted to, but I can tell you this, the people who walk through the doors here every day, they're looking for talent. Our upper management and executives, they're looking for talent. I'm the manager here, I'm looking for an assistant manager, and I pick the ones who have the right attitude, the right work ethic, and the right skills. So if you come in here and you understand that this place is the springboard to your dream job, to all the dreams that you want to have, man, have you got a future here. And if that's not who you are, then tell me right now, because we need to figure out the fit for you that's not here. That's the reality of it. But our kids, they need us to pour hope and love and encouragement into them. We gotta set the standard high and then recognize them when they do better than they thought they could. I'm not saying that you can cure everybody out there. You can't, it's impossible. But you would be amazed at how many you can cure when you show each person how much you care about them specifically. Let's look at the next question. Let's see, uh, how do you get a clear picture to your dream? Ah, man, that's a deep question. How do you get a clear picture? It takes some time. It takes some thought. It really takes a lot of time too. In our performance planner, we teach a system and it's, you know, it's the goal setting system. But before that, we literally have like five pages of questions that you've got to ask. And on that first page is your dream list. And so what we want you to do on the dream list is to write down everything you've ever wanted to be, do, or have. Everything. No limits. This list, I mean, you think, okay, I can, I can put a lot. Well, let me tell you, it starts getting hard after about 20 or 30. You know, you could say, I want the mansion, I want the Ferrari, I want to own my own island, I want a, a house with an elevator. I mean, there's all these things that you can put in it. And once you kind of get that out of the way, okay, who do I want to be? I want to be known as somebody who lived a life of integrity that people could count on. I want to leave a legacy. I want my life to impact for the better my, my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids. You start writing all that stuff down. It takes time. And then you let it sit. You let it sit and, and just kind of marinate for a day or two. Then you go back to it and you start circling the ones that are really important to you that would benefit everybody involved if you achieve that, the ones that fit your personality. And you start eliminating the ones that aren't your dreams. I can't tell you how many people I know who've been to law school or medical school or engineers, and the reason they went is because they were good at it and their parents told them they should. It had nothing to do with their dream. They just thought they had to. So you start eliminating the things that are other people's dreams, and you start putting the ones that are in there. This is a deep question, but until you take the time to evaluate what you really want to be, do, and have, and then whittle out the ones that aren't really yours and don't really fit your strengths, and then start focusing on your own strengths, your own personalities, it's difficult. Most people never start because they don't believe they can. I'm telling you, if you go through this process, you will discover three or four dreams. Some of them will be short, medium, and long, all different lengths, but you can start taking steps today to get closer to your dreams. Let's see, uh, how do you get your manager to realize that appreciation and recognition is essential? Well, I would start by sending them to a Zig Ziglar program. That's what I would do. <laughs> that's just me, though. You know, that's a difficult one. Uh, and, and I like questions. Uh, you know, a good question in a conversation is, how do you know when you've done a good job? How do you know? Does the boss say you did a good job? So you could ask your manager, just say, hey, you know, you've been around here longer than I have, and, you know, I'm not sure, you've never really said, but do you want to move up the chain here? I mean, do you want to be promoted? And they, they might say, yeah, or, or whatever, and say, well, I'm just curious, how do you know when you've done a good job? And they'll say, oh, you know, well, I get an email, or somebody will walk in and tell me, and, and say, wow, that, that's pretty cool, you know. That sounds like a real principle that we could build on around here. If there's somebody else in the organization and I see them doing a good job, do you think it makes sense for me to share with them, hey, you know, you're doing a good job, I appreciate your help. It's tough. It's harder to manage up. 
But the way you manage up is you build yourself and you specifically design paths and goals that you want to achieve and then the behavior that you want everybody to see you doing. So if you're complimenting others, recognizing others, putting in extra time, it's going to get noticed. I had a gentleman and his goal was to uh, be promoted from assistant manager to manager. And he said, Tom, how do I set this goal? I want to make this a reality. And I said this, I said, first off, it's a little bit of a dangerous goal because have you noticed that sometimes management and leadership, they don't use their brains when they promote people? <laughs> Sometimes they promote people for political reasons or personal relationships. It doesn't have to do on, you know, whether they're really doing a great job or not. He said, yeah, I've seen that happen. I said, so you, first you've got to perform. You've, you've got to hit, you know, got to hit it out of the park in every area on your attitude, on your skills, and on your work ethic. I mean, you've got to be top notch. But you also have to let your know your manager that you're looking to be promoted up. And here's how I would do it. I'd go to your manager and I'd say simply this, I'd say, you know, I'm assistant manager and we brought in some new people on the team and I've noticed there's two or three of them who I think someday could be great assistant managers. With your permission, if it's okay with you, would you mind if I spent a little bit of time each week working with each one of these three people individually, kind of teaching them what I know as being a good assistant manager? Well, what do you think the manager's gonna say? Of course the manager's going to say, yeah, go ahead and do that. And then you ask the second question. Well, before I go and train them, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to get your okay on what I'm going to train them on. And what I've done is I've taken our, our company handbook, you know, what I was trained on, and I've written some notes in it. I'm really going to follow the timeline and the strategy that we're already taught here, uh, and I'm going to add in kind of my experience. Here it is. Is that okay? Well, of course the manager's going to say that's okay. Here's what's just happened. He's told the manager that he's looking how to develop other people. And if the manager were to ever come back and tell him and say, you know what, we couldn't promote you because you're so good in your position, we couldn't afford to leave you. He's taken, or we couldn't, we couldn't afford to promote you because you're so good in your position. He's taken away that excuse, right? Because he has developed his replacement people already. So how do you develop yourself? How do you move up to the next level? Becoming the person that you're meant to be, developing all those qualities, attitude, activity, and skill, and then figuring out how you can develop and recognize those that you work with. Even if you're in a team level, how can you help others be, do, and have more? We got time for one more question. Let's see. Uh, Okay, we'll finish on this one. Wayne in Albuquerque, having a dream is not that difficult, but keeping it in front of you day in and day out is another story. What is the key to allowing your dream to motivate you every day? I'm gonna share with you what I call the principle of the one thing. And if you go online and you look up the domino effect or the domino principle, what it really says is this, and I think I got this from uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller, I think that's who wrote the book, but. Um, what it is is a domino can knock over another domino that's 50% bigger than itself, okay? That means a two-inch domino can knock over a three-inch domino. That means that a three-inch domino can knock over a four-and-a-half-inch domino. That means that 28 dominoes later, you can knock over the Empire State Building. So that tells you there's incredible power in doing the one thing, that one domino. So I want you to take your dream, and if it's a big dream, right, if it's like a large amount of money or retirement or, or a house or, or something that's big and significant, it's gonna take many steps, many dominoes to get to that dream. So I want you to take that dream and I want you to visualize it, I want you to have it in front of you, and then I want you every morning to ask yourself, what's the one thing I can do today that's going to get me closer to that dream? The one thing that's going to raise every boat in the harbor when I do that. The one thing that's going to make everything else better. So one goal or one thing you could do to have that happen is this. We know that people who are in good physical health tend to get more done. It's just a matter of stamina and energy 
and more days on work instead of being sick. I mean, it's just a reality. If you're in good shape, you're going to be more effective throughout the year. So maybe the one thing that's going to get you your goal is to keep your physical health in shape, right? So now you're, you're connecting your physical goal to the dream that you want to achieve. So now you got that going. Okay, what's the next thing? Well, I got to be an expert in that area. So maybe the one thing I'm going to focus on next, the next domino is reading 30 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day to get the education I need in order to make that one thing happen. See how that works? So you connect the big dream to the one thing. So let's close it off this way. We're going to be sending you an email and we're going to be inviting you to come to our Ziegler Business Owner Boot Camp. So if you're an owner out there and you want to take your business to the next level, I hope you take the time to join us at least, at least take advantage of the, the email business assessment to, to Philip Hatfield. Just send that in. We'll email it back to you. You'll be able to take this assessment. I think the assessment only takes about 15 minutes to complete. It's pretty cool. It shows you the balance in your business, what you need to work on, uh, where, what areas you're strong in. And then it'll give a chance for Philip to talk with you and to give you a feedback to whether this is, you know, the perfect program for you or not. This was the first webcast in our Live to Win series. Our next series is coming up. We'll be announcing it. It'll be coming up in a, in a few weeks. I'm going to be doing that, and it's going to be on having a balanced ride, having a fun and smooth ride in life, the key areas to balance success, about how you can take your personal life and your business life and meld them together and achieve all the things that you want to achieve. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Tom Ziegler, CEO of Ziegler Inc., and we will see you next time on our Live to Win series.